Always in the things red. Did I see this? Uh, ski beep boop boop. Thank you for the prime. Welcome. Thank you so much. I haven't seen this. Lauren had told Maybe her I friends multiple times time. that she felt someone had been inside her apartment, and she also started getting an eerie vibe when she came back alone, especially late at night. It was as though she could sense something wasn't right, and she even thought about moving multiple times, but unfortunately never went through with it. The reality was that Stephen McDaniel had stolen a master's key from a security guard and oh, let himself into her apartment and looked around on several God. occasions. He also started filming her when she would leave and return <gasps> to her apartment during all hours of the day. Had Lauren been in this situation before, or even knew anyone that had, she may have trusted her intuition and unknowingly saved herself from a oh, tragic fate. Okay. But that's the key word. Trust. She had no proof of the danger she was in, only conviction, which unfortunately wasn't strong enough when it was most needed. Stephen McDaniel okay, snuck honestly, into Lauren's apartment once oh more, my God, only this guy. time she was sleeping inside. As he crept into her bedroom, she awoke and immediately panicked once she saw the intruder. McDaniel then pounced on top of her and proceeded to strangle her no. for roughly 15 minutes. Lauren put up a courageous fight and clawed at her attacker's face and chest, but she was eventually overpowered and died of asphyxiation. Uh, Janet, what After is the this? murder, Stephen the dismembered title. Lauren's body in the bathtub with a hacksaw. He cut his victim into five pieces, placed each piece in a trash bag, and then disposed of each of them in separate trash cans around campus. Three days later, Lauren's concerned friends would arrive at her apartment and let themselves in with a spare key. McDaniel would notice oh from God, his window and invited smirk. himself inside as he offered to help. All of her belongings were still inside, including her cell phone, driver's license, and passport. A missing persons report was filed that <laughs> night. A search party commenced the next morning, and police would discover the victim's torso oh at 9.40 God. a.m. It was placed in a trash can next to the apartment complex. The rest of the victim's remains were never recovered. The investigation was then switched from a missing person to murder. Police canvassed the surrounding area and began conducting interviews with neighbors and classmates, one of whom was Stephen McDaniel. But he was first interviewed by the local news, and at the time was unaware that part of the victim's remains had been discovered. Um, we're just trying to find out where she is at this point. I mean, no one has seen her since Saturday. I mean, the last time oh, anyone heard from her was an bitch. email that she sent Not out. Not Krillin, and thanks for the prime, thank you. No one's heard from her since. What kind of person was she? I mean, how did you, what did you see? I mean, her? she's as nice as can be. I mean, very personable, very much a people person. Do you know anybody that, any enemies she might have had, somebody that might want to hurt her? No, I, I mean, we, we just don't know where she is. What about um, in the, like, the parking lot area? I know they've been doing a lot of, I think that's where they have recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Body? Um, had you heard, had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? Right. I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like, they took out a body there earlier. We don't know if it's the same person or not. So that's how we're trying to ask people. His acting skills? There. Are you okay, sir? Is it? Is it he kill her? Okay. So he's just like acting, right? It's not acting. This is most likely oh, a genuine reaction disguised as another. He is most fear? likely feeling a sense of fear and shock over oh. the fact a substantial piece of evidence has been discovered. Yet he plays it off as a feeling of sorrow over yeah, the loss of I his supposed friend. Yeah, I thought it was friend. sorrow. Yeah. I don't know anyone that would want to hurt her. Like, I would be like, oh my god, my friend. As nice person as there is. He's surprised they found it. Okay, chat, like, the people saying he's just surprised they found it. Did you guys already watch this and know that? Or, like, did you guys already... Because, like, I... S can't just be me who actually feels like they thought it was that, right? They said it. Like, before that, I'm so confused. Thrawn, thank with the 18 months. Welcome Something back to Tid Army. When you're happy, yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, thank she, you. She was going to be moving out uh, today. I mean, I, because yeah. you already know he killed her. He would do this. Well, I thought he was they, acting. I, <laughs> I mean, they went in. We looked around the place. Uh, no sign of a struggle. No sign that anyone had broken in. Just nothing. He was interviewed by police at 11.50 a.m. and offered to help in any way he could, yet came across as fidgety and apprehensive the entire time. There were two highlighted moments of the interview. The first was when Stephen asserted that he was a virgin, saving himself for marriage. The second was when the detective discovered scratch marks on his face and stomach, which he asserted were done by himself in his sleep. 
He at that point unknowingly became the prime suspect and was asked if police could search his apartment. Stephen reluctantly accepted. Oh yeah, sorry, I'll do this. Um, hesitant assassin, thank you for the two months. Welcome back to Tin Army. When you're happy, I'm happy. Thank back to the complex you. with four other investigators. While searching his apartment, they discovered a collection of swords, guns, toilet rolls, stockpiled provisions as if he was expecting an apocalyptic event, and a mask made out of women's <laughs> underwear. The most significant discovery, however, what? was a this pack of condoms. Stephen was asked why he would have such an item in his possession if he was staying celibate before why marriage. Were the toilet at rolls? which point, I he miraculously confessed to stealing them from another apartment. Why this gave the detectives probable cause for like arrest, and Stephen toilet. was placed in handcuffs oh. and brought back to the police station. His interrogation began just after 11 p.m. Pod roll, same with 11 right. months. Welcome back. Thank you. I just gotta ask you a few questions. Okay. Uh, you came down earlier at night, me and you talked, all right. You don't have any weapons on you, do you? No. That's just you are. What's wrong? You know I'm Detective Patterson, right? Yes. Do you remember? Put your hands up here. You remember us talking yes. earlier tonight, right? Yes. You remember me earlier in the day? Yes. When we came down here and talked yes. a little bit and then we left? Yes. Okay. Oh the God. monotone dialogue and Good lifeless man, demeanor you really see here freaky. reportedly started on the drive back to the police station. And the suspect's conduct throughout the entire procedure is not only mystifying, but almost impressive. This is one of the most extraordinary pieces of interrogation footage to ever reach the public domain. Really? I need to know about this girl right here. You know her? Yes. Who is that? Lauren Giddings. Does she live next door to you? Yes. When's the last time you seen her? Two or three weeks ago. Okay. Was you friends with Lauren? Yes. Look at me when you talk to me, son. Okay? The suspect has morphed himself into this abnormal and extremely creepy character. <laughs> Whether it's a strategy or some sort of mental breakdown is unclear. But what's incredible is that it somewhat dictates the pace of the interrogation. The detective has just closed the distance and commanded eye contact, both of which are recognized techniques to increase psychological pressure. Yet the oh, absurdly God. haunting manner in which the suspect turns his head and fixes his gaze unnerves the detective to the point where he becomes the one to look away and reset his posture. This essentially never happens in interrogations, oh God, as it can give the suspect an incredible out. boost in confidence. Look at me when you talk to me, son. Okay? Was you friends with her? Yes. Close friends? We were good I friends. I mean, y'all were friends, right? Both yes. of y'all were law students. You're studying to be an attorney, right? Yes. What kind of law do you want to go into? Criminal law? Yes. Civil? Is that what you want to do for a living? Yes. Okay. The detective steps back from his initially aggressive strategy. He asks trivial questions for 35 seconds before attempting to ramp up the pressure in a more subtle manner. And you've lived next to Lauren for a long time? Yes. Okay. Do you know yes. where she's at tonight? No. Hmm? No. Have you ever seen her with that dress on? No. You have no idea where she's at? No. Yes. Oh my god, he's literally staring right at the cop. Oh! He's so scary! Look. Oh my god. Just tell me what happened, bro. I don't know. Well, where's she at? I need you, I'm asking you for your help. I'm a detective, and I'm asking you for he's your so help. He's so scary! I don't know. This guy's so know? scary, actually. You like, uh, I don't know what you need. I need to know where Lauren's at. I don't know. Do you even care that no one can find her? Yes. I mean, I don't know, do you? Yes. Oh my god. Oh no, the police. Yo, just tap out, man. Get <laughs> someone back in. Uh, it's know. like a mask. It's <laughs> cut out like a mask. Do you, you cut underwear out that look like a mask? No. Are you a knife collector or a knife person? or? No. You just like knives? I used to collect swords. 
I mean, do you know your swords? Yes. I mean, to sell and trade swords? No. Is that how Lauren looked with the long hair the last time you seen her? Yes. Or she got, that's how she looks? Yes. He's still making eye contact with him. Oh my God. I mean, earlier today. It's the like bad quality that makes it so creepy, right too. Like this. Holy fuck. I need to know. Why all of a sudden you're acting like this? Yeah. I don't understand. Okay. Earlier today, we sat here and talked. But now you're acting like you don't know what's going on. Hmm? Huh? I mean, did something happen or something to you? I mean, why are you not, why are you shutting down? Oh why my God, he's using the pause tactic. I don't know. You don't know? Are you scared? No. I mean, you're not scared, are you? No. Steven's demeanor doesn't waver for the first 20 minutes, so the detective eventually takes a more distinctly aggressive approach. He attacks the subject's character to see if it might coax him out of the act and into defending his dignity. You got your ass on that fucking news and stood out there and gave a media report that her mother saw about her missing daughter. And you want me to sit there and tell him that you don't know. Is that what you want me to tell them? Because you're all over the news. You sure stood out there and ran your mouth to the news media. Yeah. And now you're going to get out Beardo. here and you don't fucking know. Yeah. You, you know, don't fucking know. <laughs> you're just a sorry piece of shit. Oh. That don't give a fuck. Right? Fighting words. Well, why'd you tell the media everything? Do you need to see what you told the media today? It was on the 11 o'clock news. Was it well, dreading really? I think you. this one's scary. Tell me. I want to know. I don't know where she is. That ain't what you told the media. You didn't stand in front of that camera and say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I need you to tell me what you want me to tell her mother. And then I won't ask you another thing. I'm not going to tell her mother another that you don't thing. Know Because her mother saw you on the news tonight. And she cried all the way down to Macon. Because you had the balls to get on the news and tell everybody everything. So this little act that you're doing right now ain't working with me. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Okay. So you can just uh, snap out of... I like... This detective is so like... Z-formation snap kind of sass. Scrap things at 37 months. Welcome back. I will click on that later. But because we're watching this, I don't want to ruin the immersion. How many times you going to say it? If you did something... If you want to link me that at the end of the video, I'm down. Just let me know. I didn't. Who did? I didn't. I don't know. Whether Dude. it was planned or Holy not, fuck, the second so detective creepy. enters the room with a Thank similar God. strategy of immediate aggression. Rapport development seems to have been collectively thrown by the wayside. What's up, man? Did you talk to him about his guns? Yeah. When was the last time you shot those guns? I haven't. You've never shot a gun? No. Have you ever shot any gun in your whole life? No. Never. No. So you bought three guns that you've never shot? Yes. Why? To have. For what? Shit. <laughs> to have. For what? I'm asking for what? Why do you want to have them? What makes, did they give you, I mean, tell me why it's important to you to have three guns. That's an easy question. Come on, talk to me, buddy. Me and you talked all day today. We ain't had a problem communicating. Why is it important for you to have three guns? This was for sure the scariest one know? to me. No. You say you don't know where Lauren is, right? Right. 
You said you told me earlier you and Lauren were friends, right? Yes. How how would you describe y'all's relationship? She was my friend. She was your friend. <laughs> what did you ever do things for? Did she ever do things for you? What did she ever do for you? You know, it really f is fucked up. We She's talk, not what there. Talk about? To say no, the we're not friends. Okay. How many times have you been in her apartment? I with doubt her they were friends. Fucked up. You don't know? If you had to guess, what would you, I mean, one time, two times, three times, what? Maybe two. Maybe two? See, if I had only been somewhere twice, I could remember that. If I had been there over True. 50 times, and you asked me how many times I've been, like, I don't know a lot. Yeah. But the fact that you've only been there twice, when I say how many times you've been there, you say you don't know, that's just odd to me. Does that make sense to you? Yes. That does make sense? Well, so what I'm saying right now makes sense? No. Dude. Oh my God. <laughs> what? Lauren's missing. Oh, no, that would have pissed me off so much. Pretty little girl right here. Your neighbor. She's missing. Much like Detective 1, Detective 2 now valiantly moves in for the psychological charge. He closes the distance and locks eye contact. His physical demeanor, alongside a prolonged gaze, will hopefully crack the suspect's fortified barrier. Once broken, the momentum will commence and the suspect will be more likely to divulge incriminating information. All the detective has to do is maintain eye contact for longer than his adversary. It's a psychological battle oh of attrition between two opposing forces. On, like, and cats these moments can sometimes last for minutes or on something. end. I don't remember. I know. Me and you both know it's no different than when you was a little kid, right? But if I'm just like... And you reached in that cookie you jar this? and you got caught after your mama told you not to get that cookie. No, I wouldn't so be able you, to. you get a cookie? No. And whenever you tell I can't a lie, even do it to my cat. You feel bad about it right then. One, with every lie, there's a chance you're going to get caught. And that weighs on you. Because you know you did something bad. Am I right? I didn't do it. I wouldn't you be able to do it cookie. with this creepy guy. You smell like you've been cleaning up, like you've been using cleaner to clean up. I know what that smells like. My wife smells like that all the time when she cleans the house. You've been using some kind of cleaner to clean up your apartment, haven't you? No. Steven, do you tell me you live with, like a med? How does your apartment get clean? I clean it. When was the last time you cleaned it, Steven? I don't remember. Was it this week? No. You mean you go a whole week without cleaning? Yes. Why? That's wow. horrible, Steven. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it, Stephen. Let me tell you what I wow, think. Wow, that's horrible, Stephen. I think that she was a friend of yours. Look at her right here. I think that she was a friend of yours. I would feel so I attacked. Think happened, Stephen. So judged. You used to watch her come in and out of her apartment, didn't you? I was driving so loud. <laughs> Where the hell y'all going? We're just talking. You see that pretty girl right there? Yes. You telling me you looked at a pretty girl like that and you never once thought, ever? Man. She looks good. You never thought that? It's the accent. It's the accent that makes you want to laugh at that. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. <laughs> what do you mean you don't understand? Did, you know how when you're sitting there you see a girl walking down the road? <laughs> she looks good. And you say, man, that girl looks good. You ever see a good looking girl where you think to yourself, man, that girl looks good? Yes. You never thought that about her? Yes. So you mean to tell me you look at porn on the internet and get off to that, but you never looked at her and said, man, I wonder what it'd be like to have sex with her? Yes. You have? No. 
Wait, what did he say yes to then? <laughs> I'm so confused. Dude, this is hard, buddy. I know this is hard. And I can tell it's only you want to let it go. There's blood in your apartment, Stephen. You didn't get it all up. This is the widely recognized futility technique, which is used to make the subject believe it is useless to resist due to the overwhelming evidence against them. It's most effective when the interrogator can play on doubts that already exist in the subject's mind. The only problem here is that Stephen didn't dismember Lauren inside his apartment. Uh, it all happened in Lauren's apartment. So the detective's bluff is already called at this oh, point. Oh no. It didn't all come off. You scrubbed and you wiped. But we can tell that. Don't you watch CSI? Shit. Yeah, we know it. Well, you shot your shot, detective, you know. He's like... Stephen. Why is there blood in your bathroom? The detective now completely shifts his strategy from confrontational and aggressive to sympathetic and understanding. He attempts to gotta, create a connection and then afford Stephen a more socially acceptable reason for the crime. This is extremely difficult to pull off after a direct confrontation, as there is no established rapport nor trust. The usual routine is the exact opposite. You would first build rapport and then get aggressive once a connection has been attained. I wanted to give you an opportunity to tell it. I wanted to be here with you to go through that process because I know you're not a monster, man. I know you're not a bad guy. You're just a hard-working student trying to pass a bar exam at you. You ain't got a lot of support from your family, do you? Yes. You do? The strategy fails at the first hurdle. Stephen immediately shuts down the afforded sympathy and reasoning behind the alleged crime, which was the concept of unsupportive parents. But the detective now attempts to roll with it. A lot of people can't say that. And the fact that you do have support from your family should make things easier. Because your family wants to feel like they've raised somebody that tells the truth and is honest, right? Yes. Did you hear that girl, Stephen? Oh, suck my dick, bitch. Mango Muji, thank you so much you for the prime. Welcome. Steve? Thank you. No. <laughs> you never heard anyone. No. I've heard people, Stephen. <laughs> oh, God. I've made mistakes me. in my life. That's not even normal to say you've never heard anybody. Sometimes people get mad and they say things they don't mean to say, it hurts. The lead detective kiss. then asks non-confrontational questions for almost 30 minutes, which is most likely to see if it will change the suspect's demeanor and the manner in which he responds. But it doesn't. Stephen maintains the same lifeless disposition which he has now kept up for almost 90 minutes. You know what's crazy? I was talking to people that he works with and everything. They talk about how... I He's well, always expresses himself. Oh, he don't know. He's very talkative. Stephen, they say you're so Dude, talkative. Dude, yeah, he was on the interview. And you're always he's so like, friendly. You stop blah, and blah, say blah, hello. Blah, 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 blah. Why is it that you're acting so short with us tonight? If you if you have all this character and personality about so you, us. why is it that everything that we get from you is yes, no, or I don't know? I don't know. Oh, my God. Why are you acting like this, Stephen? Oh. Getting all riled up. You see how I'm able to talk. <laughs> this motherfucker said, I don't know again. Like we're having a conversation. Be so angry. The only thing you're bringing to the table is a yes, no, or I don't know. Steven, did you hurt that girl? No. Fire. You tell me if you did. Yes. Have you lied to me at all in this interview? No. Yes, you have, Steven. When was the last time you did laundry? A few weeks ago. You ain't washed clothes in a few weeks? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Why? don't fucking judge. No, you don't. That's another lie. You don't have a lot of clothes. <laughs> yes, I do. No. Nope. You got enough underwear to last you three weeks? Yes. Do you wear the same pair of underwear more than one day? Yes. <laughs> Why? Because it's so clean enough to wear. It's so clean Where's enough to girl? wear. <laughs> Steven, you know. You're going to look at this right here, this little girl right here. And you're going to say you don't know? I know you know. I don't know. Yes, you know. What are you going to say tomorrow when I say we got your hair with the body? What are you going to say to me then? 
Because you know, like, I go like that. Look at my hair. That's how easy it falls out. Look at all that on your head. You don't think none fell out? It did. We just wanted to give you an opportunity to tell it. So you didn't look like a monster at the end. Because you know what? I don't believe that you're monster. a monster, Steve. I believe that you're a good guy. You've been picked on. Girls didn't show you the respect that you deserved. You did something stupid. And I believe you feel bad about it. And that's why you're all freaked out right now. But I'm giving you the opportunity to get right. I'm giving you an opportunity to show everybody that's you're not a, a monster. That you feel bad about what happened. Your hair is there, man. Your hair is there. That's right, buddy. See that? Yeah. Look at it. I used to do that when I was in middle school for fun. See I'd be so easy? fascinated. <laughs> See this stuff right here, your hair? Yeah, it fell out of your head when you was moving the body, Stephen. That's right. All the dandruff? You I'm like, whoa, the snowy. <laughs> Yes, you do, Steven. Why, man? Why? Why? Tell me, bud. I didn't do it. Yes, you did, Steven. We want you to, to tell it so that way people are understand you're not a monster. Things just, you got out of control. It's a sickness. Yeah, that guy is a... Why'd you do this it, This guy's Steven? a freak. I didn't do Steven. it. Steven! Why are you going to keep telling that? You hurt that girl. No, I didn't. Yes, you did, Steven. He's you still her, maintaining man. eye contact. She was screaming. Screaming, Steven. Why? And I know you feel bad about it. I can see it in your face. What came over you, man? What happened, Stephen? I don't know. I know you don't know. You can't, you couldn't control it, could you? I didn't do it. Stephen! They steal your hair and take it over there? They didn't, did they? That's right. It's all sinking in right now. The way he says, Stephen! He knows. Is what you're thinking. Steven, <laughs> I don't want it to be a game between me and you. I know it hurts, and I know you're not an awful person, and you want to tell it. Your hair was there, Steven. We've all known it all along. We wanted just to give you an opportunity to tell what happened. Did y'all have sex? Did you try to have sex? No. You think about having sex? No. Liar. Liar. What kind of man doesn't think about having sex? Oh, <laughs> God. You said earlier you like girls, right? <laughs> you said she's a pretty girl, right? <laughs> this detective is funny. What did you do to her, Steven? I didn't do anything. You're lying. <laughs> you hurt that girl. No, I didn't. Sure it did, and that's why you're having this massive meltdown right now. <laughs> the detective quite literally repeats the phrase, you hurt that girl, to which Stephen responds, no I didn't, and this goes on for the best part of 20 minutes. Perhaps the detective's strategy was to induce mental exhaustion, yet it had no effect whatsoever. Wow, that, that I read that like a Pokemon thing. Detective used exhaustion. Well, no I effect. Didn't. <laughs> you heard her, Stephen. No, I didn't. Not very you effective. Did. Take this from me. You don't deserve to look at it. Just stay right here, okay? Okay. Ugh, he's so creepy. I appreciate all your cooperation tonight, okay? Okay. Oh, uh, uh, he's so scary. He just sits there just like that. Oh my god. All right, we're ready to go. It's like an NPC. I just need to discuss a few more things with you. The lead detective now abandons the pursuit of any sort of admission. He instead proceeds to belittle and humiliate the suspect as much as possible. It may have a tactical purpose, but it's more likely out of frustration, alongside the fact he is certain of the suspect's culpability. 
where you, you, I know earlier today you told me you stayed home all weekend, right, in your apartment. Yes. Did anybody see you? Hey. Did you talk to anybody on the weekend? Fun of his bald you spot. On the computer spot. all weekend? That's Is normal. Thing I can look at that I can say. In especially he men. Be involved because he was. I uh, drink my water. On the computer. Or he was online on a porn site, or he was online doing college work, or anything that would exclude you as being involved altogether. I mean, did anybody see you this weekend at the house? Did you go out to get a newspaper? Did you wave to a neighbor, or just locked yourself in all week? Yes. Nobody saw you? No. I mean, what do you just stay in the house all day? Yes. I mean, what do you do all day in the house? I mean, you've always done that your whole life. Are they you like actually shot? Like, man, How they would. I would be judged so hard. <laughs> like, where they at? <laughs> hmm? I mean, luckily, I, you know, I would have VOD proof. Like, yeah, I was streaming, <laughs> but I do stay okay, home a lot. Right? Yes. Name but I one, do have alibis. You guys are my four. alibis. Brian Granger, Cass Lawson, Ashley Morehouse. <laughs> have bought proof. The same people I talked to today. I'm social friends. online, yeah. I'm usually yeah. doing stuff with friends. One of the reasons interrogations are so sleeping. fascinating <laughs> is the ethical vacuum it creates for everyone inside its bubble. In any other circumstance, the detective's behavior here would be considered cruel and reprehensible. He's essentially bullying the suspect, yet the empathy <laughs> we would normally have is now stripped away through the impression of retribution. We know this person has done something horrific, and the treatment he is now receiving is merited through his own actions. What if you delete VOD because of DMCA? Okay, well, thousands can re recollect. Recollect? Have recollection. You guys have my back, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Creamy Monkey, they the four months. Welcome back to Santa Rami when you're happy. I'm happy. Thank you. You guys got me right. We know what you did to her, so we just want to know what you... If you were going to tell us or not. What the fuck? didn't do anything. Uh, that's what you say. But we know different. So, you're fucked either way. You're fucked. We already know. We know you killed her. We know you put her body in the trash can. The news media knows it. To dismember a body is mother. next level. Your sister knows it. Like, you must be all your kinds of fucked up to, like, be the mentally... Oh, I... Blah, 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 blah. It's like... Well, I mean, obviously, one thing is killing someone, but then, like, dismembering. You're like... When I call them. That's yeah. That's your time you crazy. Nobody wants to see you. Someone just did that recently near where I live, so that's fun. Ah, uh, humans, humans, some humans, so crazy. The entire interrogation took over two hours. When sped up by 20,000%, you truly get a glimpse of how remarkable the suspect's Sarah catatonic MC performance 2000, was. Thank you for the sub. Thank you. I just realized it blocks the alert with my chat. Hopefully this is better. Yeah, he just doesn't move. Like, I'm sitting here and I already, I, I moved more than him. Like, I'm so, like, my arm feels like, that this arm feels so, like, uncomfortable. His mother came to speak with him soon after this moment. Oh, that's what and you said? And although he maintained oh. his innocence, he immediately snapped out of a so zombie-like character. Oh? It's difficult to interpret the reasoning behind the performance. Whether it was a pre-planned strategy, improvised in the moment, or some type of psychological breakdown is unclear. But whatever it was, it evidently seemed to work, as the interrogators got nothing. The yeah. suspect's behavior was so abnormal, they were essentially at a loss with what to do, or where to even start with a specific <laughs> plan of attack. 
The evidence, however, was irrefutable. Hundreds of pictures of Lauren were discovered on Stephen's <gasps> flash drive, along with multiple video recordings of inside her apartment. A hacksaw was found in a supply closet of the apartment complex, and it was marked red with what was later ew, identified ew, as ew. Lauren's blood through DNA testing. The packaging for the exact same hacksaw was found in Stephen's apartment. When confronted with the evidence, he took a plea deal to avoid the death penalty and was rendered a life sentence without the possibility of parole. He is currently being held at the high-security Hancock State Prison in Sparta, Georgia. One of the more discussed elements to the present day is the motive behind the crime. What was the reasoning behind Stephen's actions that night? He asserts that murder was never his intention, but simply the result of momentary panic and confusion, all preceded by the foolish decision to break into an apartment, which stemmed from a potent yet harmless infatuation with a girl he found attractive. It is not he harmless. essentially tried to make you... out that his behavior was Ugh. devious and calculating, but not evil or perverted. Public opinion on no. the matter varies, yet no, the no, general no. consensus is that the murder no. was premeditated, mainly due to the fact that he had bought the hacksaw just days prior to the murder. A popular psychological viewpoint takes us back to the personality of a stalker. Lauren was set to move out the very same day she was murdered, which brings some to believe that Stephen was terrified by the notion of change, that the person he had been infatuated with and fantasized over for so long was no longer going to be a part of his life. And no matter how obscure and unreciprocated their association was, he couldn't bear the thought of losing her. Rather than Lauren going on to live the promising life that lay ahead of her and leaving Stephen behind as a forgotten memory, he has now in some abstract manner connected them both forever. Okay. This one, I think I know why I creeps me out the most is Good because be it's back. like... Hope you're doing well. This is the could sixth Could very well final possibly happen to me. ...installment of my Stephen McDaniels commentary. Man. It's been a slog. We are deep in the troll vortex of insanity. I don't think anyone's gone this far. Don't say that. It's like cave dude, diving. But you guys a lot have more no dangerous. idea what I've. You guys have no idea what I've been through. I like come to terms because, like, so the police aren't gonna do anything until things, you know, it's like stuff happens, like online threats, stuff like that, aren't taken as seriously.